This is a TSC DA320 printer. It's 300 DPI direct thermal. It doesn't have any ribbon uh, capability at all for thermal transfer. And I'm just going to do a quick um, overview of the ports, how to power it up, set it up, um, specifically for our ink marking system that we have developed at ID Integration. Um, for just and we'll go through connectivity a little bit later in a separate video, but uh, we do have um, we do have a preference for using Ethernet. It's just easier to set up the printer and do updates, upgrades to firmware, that kind of thing. So I'm going to plug in Ethernet. We'll show in a separate video how we actually identify the IP address, and then go ahead and power it up. I don't have any material in here yet. Oops, sorry. There's a switch in the back. Um, I'll turn that on in just a second, but I wanted to actually load the material first. So uh, you want to pull up on these, the lid will open. And this is the material I'm going to be using. This is a continuous uh, roll. It doesn't have any gaps. It has a shiny side. It's kind of wax covered and then a tissue paper on the back. Uh, this becomes porous when you actually burn a pattern on the, on the waxy side allowing ink to be pushed through. So that's kind of how our ink product works. The, anything that's green on here is kind of a user uh, interface or a user, user adjustment. So here we have kind of a spring-loaded system here. We'll put our material straight in like that. And if you want to lock this in place and maybe make it so it's pinching less, it's no real need to in our case. But if you want to, you can spread them apart just a little bit and then lock it down by pushing that button. Uh, when you pull it out, you, know, you can't get it out unless you pull it back up. And then you can spread it apart again and remove it. All right. We're going to do shiny side up. And there's a gap sensor right here. And we're going to see if we can adjust the printer itself to just turn the gap sensor off. Uh, if that doesn't work, we are going to use uh, kind of an opaque cover and just put it straight on top of that gap sensor so there's no way it can generate a fault by saying, hey, you're out of material. You know, continuous material is not looking for a gap, but there's still a translucency to the material. And so the printer is more than likely going to give a, uh, a fault saying that you don't have any material in here. Okay. And just to prove that point, let's leave that off for a second. And sorry for bumping my camera all the time. Put that in. Push it down until it clicks, and then we'll turn our power on. And what we should probably see happen here is this should probably fault out as it's powering up the first time. I think it'll I think the default um, length on this is a few inches. I guess I've um, played with the settings before. And so it doesn't fault out. Um, if you run into trouble with this printer and you really just want to start back at factory defaults, the way to do it is to turn off your power, hold the feed button, turn on the power, and wait until it blinks green. It may be hard to see this on the camera, but it'll blink red and orange and then finally green. As soon as it blinks green, you can let go. And it should go back to its factory defaults. Okay, so now that we have the factory defaults on there, let's see, I've got an issue already. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? And maybe it was that this was tugging too much on it. So let's try that again. There we go. And now it spits out material, but it'll go to a red light because. It thinks it's looking for a gap and there isn't one. Okay, so we'll go in the next video more in detail on the settings, but that covers connections, media loading, and factory resets um, for the printer.